we're here um, at WefTech 2016 with Susanna Hagen from LG Sonic. We're going to talk about uh, ultrasonic algae control. So what are the common problems that you see in sanitary lagoons uh, with algae? Okay, so with algae, often they start to grow massively when the sun is shining. Mm -hmm. And then you have problems with the turbidity in the BOD. BOD. Mm -hmm. They start to get really high and therefore when they have the testing, it's not possible anymore to discharge the water into the environment. Sure. So you need to get those algae down. It's very right. important. Right. So what, what are the common approaches that, that you run into, the people, customers that you sell to? What are they, do, what are they doing now? So it depends on every continent, every country, different mm. cases, but most, the most common treatment is by using copper, a copper sulfate. Mm. So it's a biocide. It's really effective in the beginning, mm. but it's really bad for the environment mm. because it's heavy metals, so you, it's not so good. Uh, second, algae become resistant, mm. or quite a bit resistant. So you have to add more and more copper biocides mm. in order to have the same effect. Sure. So, yeah, that's the first. The second is aeration. Aeration is pretty good to keep the water healthy sure. because you get more oxygen in the water, right. but it doesn't affect the algae directly. Right. So the, the efficiency is pretty low and it costs a lot of energy right. to do the aeration. Yeah, and it's something that we've run into at Triple Point. We, we actually do sell aeration systems mm -hmm. and people often ask us, like, well, if we put aeration in, is this going to solve the algae problem? And, and our response is always, no guarantee. Yeah. You know, I would love if it did, but yeah. it doesn't work that and way because yeah. the way aeration works is that you are trying to uh, break down the food for the algae to grow but you can never get a hundred percent of that in a, in a wastewater lagoon. Yeah. It's, it's an indirectly way. Right, exactly. So what you do is more oxygen therefore the beneficial bacteria can grow better and they use the nutrients but it's very you never know how it turns out. By, sure, yeah. sure. So how does, um, what determines what type of algae grows one type versus another type? So you have a lot of different species and mm -hmm. really depends on the water, the mm -hmm. environment and everything. Mm -hmm. But what we really see is that often when the temperature is rising, that blue-green algae take over. Mm -hmm. They start to grow really fast, uh, uh, about when it's 20, 23 degrees Celsius, which is 68 to 74 mm -hmm. degrees Fahrenheit. Then they have the nutrients, they have the sunlight, and then they just grow and they take over the whole water body. Sure, yeah. sure, okay. So how does, how does LG Sonic approach this problem? So with LG Sonic, we really have an interactive algae control because every water is different and it's very important to target that specific water body and see what's going on. So what we do is really first monitor what's going on in the water mm -hmm. and therefore if we know what is growing in the water, we can directly uh, attack those algae which are in that moment in the water. So what are the ultrasonic pulses, what do they actually do? So what they do is they create a sound layer which has a pressure which more or less pushes down the algae so they cannot rise up anymore. Okay. So they cannot reach the sunlight and they cannot do photosynthesis. So therefore, okay. they cannot grow anymore. Sure. So does it destroy the algae cells? Let's get a little bit more specific on it. So what they do is we don't actually destroy them, so the cells don't burst open, so you don't, do not get the toxins into the water. Mm -hmm. It just pushes them down, and the longer they are you know, below the sunlight, mm -hmm. they will die eventually because of actually starvation. Okay. So then beneficial bacteria will just take, you know, break them down, and sure. therefore you don't have the toxins in the water. Sure, so talk to me about this monitoring. What do you actually monitor for? So that's our MPC buoy. We have here our sensors, mm -hmm. and what we, we do, we we test several parameters. So mm. first, the temperature, pH, redox, mm. but also the DO, which is very important, of course, mm. the turbidity, and phycocyanin, which is a measure for blue-green algae, sure. and chlorophyll A, which is a measure for green algae. And then how does your, what, based on those measurements, how do you change your treatment strategy, or, or what, do, what how does it work, what does it do? So what we do is every half an hour we measure what's going on in the water. Mm -hmm. And then we have water experts and who are checking all the time what's going on in the water body. And they see, okay, we see that the phycocyanin is going up a little bit. And then we instantly change our programs because we have different ultrasonic programs which target different species. Mm -hmm. It's completely safe for fish, zooplankton and other animals in the water and the bacteria. So it's only targeting the algae, but because we have different uh, ultrasonic programs, different frequencies, we really target the algae which are at that moment sure, in the water. Sure, sure, that's, that's really cool. <laughs> is it automated or I assume you don't have somebody in the Netherlands sitting at a computer and just like, oh, well, I can see this, let me change the frequency here. It, uh, it is automated. Okay. So what is going on, we measure it mm -hmm. and then it goes into the surfer and then we can see 
uh, our water quality experts can see what's going on and also our customers. So we have sure. the software and they can just see like, okay, this is going on the water, this is the temperature, this is the DO. Sure, so it's like real time. You can pull it up on your cell phone sitting in your living room and kind of see just what's going see what's on. see what's going on in the water. Sure. okay. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So is that a typical modus operandi for you guys to, to use solar panels or do you have different types of units? We Tell have, us about the different types of units you got. We have different types. So okay. we have the one which is completely autonomous, mm -hmm. which has a solar panel. So we just it can be in the water mm -hmm. and then it can just use the sun, sun energy. Mm -hmm. We also have ones which use the grid. So we just have a wire going through the water. It depends what the customer like. Mm -hmm. And therefore we can also, you know, alter our, our different uh, what the customer would like, we can just respond to that. We sure. also have one which out without the sensor, if you have a bigger lake, so mm -hmm. you have more of these, mm -hmm. then we have few with and few without the sensors because you don't need to sensor every bit of the, right. the water. And right. Therefore, yeah. right, right, that's cool. And we can do up to 50 acres with one of those, so we can cover quite a bit of uh, water with it. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Um, well, I think that's been a good interview. Thanks for joining Thank us so on Lagoons Do Better TV. Uh, if you guys out there have any questions about lagoon algae, I'd be happy to, to direct them to Suzanne. Um, and um, thanks for joining us.